So it's not going to be possible to just isolate the radical. Therefore, my first step is just going to be to get rid of at least one of the radicals by squaring both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. And recall that on the left, if I have something such as a minus b squared, it's going to give me a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And by remembering that, I'll save myself the work of having to use the distributive property and figure this whole thing out. I'm just going to go ahead and say, OK, um, a equals the square root of x plus 21, and b equals 2. So on the left, I'm going to get a squared, the square root of x plus 21, squared minus 2 times a square root of x plus 21 times b, which is 2. And then for the last term, I'll get b squared, which is 2 squared. On the right, I have a negative 1 in front of this. When I square that, negative 1 times negative 1, it becomes 1. So I'm going to end up with a positive expression on the right. And the square root of x plus 5 squared, since the index is the same as the power, this becomes the radicand. So on the right, I end up with x plus 5. OK, simplifying. Over here, I have a square root raised to the second power. So a square root squared gives me the radicand. So I can see I've gotten rid of this radical on the right, and this is not a radical. However, in the middle, this middle term is negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 times the square root of x plus 21. I'm still left with this um, radical. Here, 2 times 2 is 4. Simplify before we proceed. This gives me 2 and 4, so that's x plus 6 minus this equals x plus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract this 6 from both sides. Okay. This is actually 21. Okay, so go ahead and uh, simplify this. This is 21 plus 4 is actually going to be 25. So x plus 21, square root of that squared, gives me x plus 21. So that is 25 right here. 21 plus 4 is 25. Okay, simplifying by subtracting 25 from both sides. 5 minus 25 is negative 20. In the next step, I would subtract x from each side. So when I do that, I get x minus x. The x drops out of the left. When I take x minus x, the x also drops out of the right side. OK, now I've gotten rid of this radical on the right. On the left, I have a radical, but I also have a negative 4 in front of it, so I need to isolate the radical by dividing both sides by negative 4. So this gives me negative 20 divided by negative 4 on the right, so the square root of x plus 21 equals 5. Since I still have a radical left, I have to go through this process again, so let's take this up here and repeat the process of squaring both sides. Square root of x plus 21 squared gives me the radicand. x plus 21 equals 5 squared, that's 25. Subtracting 21 from both sides gives me 4. OK, so I came up with this solution that x equals 4. And I need to check that in the original. So check by inserting 4 for each x in the original. That's going to give me 4 plus 21, square root of 4 plus 21 minus 2 equals negative, and then that's the square root of 4 plus 5. 
This gives me the square root of 25 minus 2 equals minus square root of 9. Square root of 25 is 5. Minus 2 equals minus square root of 9, which is 3. So that gives me negative 3. This is 5 minus 2 equals 3. This is not true. Not true. Therefore, the solution is not valid. This solution, x equals 4, is not valid. Now, I said that when you use this method, if there is a valid solution, it, you'll come up with it. You might have some extra solutions, but you'll have the valid solution if it exists. What this tells me, since this is not valid, is that there is no solution. There's no valid solution here. So this was a pretty complex problem. There were two radicals, so we had to square to get rid of the radical on the right, do a bunch of simplifying, isolate the remaining radical, which is on the left, repeat the process with that by squaring both sides to come up with x equals 4. And then after all that work, we went and checked it and found that x equals 4 does not satisfy this equation, that when we use that, we end up with 3 equals negative 3. Had that negative not been there, this would have been, we could have come up with a valid solution. But with that negative in the original, the solution was not valid. Therefore, there is no solution to this radical equation. That concludes this lesson on radical equations and inequalities. Thanks for visiting educator.com.